Good morning everyone, this is Professor Robinson. In this lecture today, I'm going to discuss about the Western blotting, one of the very commonly used method in biochemistry to detect the presence of a specific protein in a given sample. The method of Western blotting, it utilizes antibody to detect the presence of a specific protein in a given sample, and this sample can be cell lysate or the blood plasma or any other sample. So what happens is that we have a protein sample and in this sample there are four different types of proteins present, let's say protein A, B, C and D and we want to detect this protein A specifically, then we will use this method of western blotting to detect this protein A specifically. So like I said before, the method of western blotting utilizes antibody and there are two different types of antibody that are used. One is primary antibody and the other is secondary antibody. Our primary antibody is specific to protein A if we want to detect this protein A in the given sample. Right? Primary antibody is specific to the protein of interest. But the secondary antibody, which is usually polyclonal antibody, this actually is, speci is, is uh, specific to primary antibody and this will actually bind to the primary antibody. Okay, so in this slide, I will briefly discuss what are the different st steps involved in the Western blotting and the principle of this method in a really brief. So let's say that we got our proteins uh, from the protein samples. It can be, you know, live cells or from uh, the uh, blood plasma. So, and we load, we load, we load actually our proteins on, on, onto the STS space gel and while loading, of course, we, we make sure that we load the equal amount in micrograms of the protein, right? So we did that. And after this, what we do is that after we have loaded and we, we, we supply it with the power supply, we supply the gel, we, we, we apply the power supply and the proteins will migrate from the negative to the positive charge uh, based on their size and the proteins will be fractionated onto the gel. So now we have the proteins, different proteins fractionated onto the gel based on their size, based on their molecular weight. So then what we will do is that we will then transfer, we transfer these uh, fractionated proteins from the gel to the membrane, right? So now the proteins, fractionated proteins from the gel are transferred to the membrane. Okay. And in the third step, what we is that what we do is we block the membrane to, to prevent any unspecific binding of the antibody. So after that, we incubate the membrane with primary antibody. And like I said before, primary antibody is specific to the target protein, right? So the, the primary antibody will, <coughs> sorry, specifically bind to the target protein on the, on the membrane, okay? So then we wash the membrane to remove unbound primary antibody and incubate it with the radio label secondary antibody. And this is actually specific to the primary antibody. So let's say this is the, 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 you know, this is our protein, protein of interest, which has already bound to the primary antibody, which is already bound to the primary antibody. And now what, when we incubate it with the secondary antibody, uh, the, the, the membrane with the secondary antibody that has already been radio labeled, what will happen is that this secondary antibody will specifically bind to the primary antibody. But the primary antibody has already bound to our protein of interest, right? So now... What we will do is that we, after, the, after, after this process, we will wash the membrane to remove any unbound secondary antibody and develop the blot with the chemiluminescent SRP substrate and expose it to the film. And thereby, we'll be able to visualize our protein of interest. So, what are the important things that we should consider during the uh, process of version blotting? The first point number one is that during the sample preparation, we should include protease inhibitor and we should always keep our samples on ice and we should work quickly to prevent any kind of protein degradation. Point number two, during the gel preparations, there are one, one important point is that we should use higher percentage gels uh, for low molecular weight proteins, but if our protein of interest are of high molecular weight, then we should use lower percentage gels. And the third really important step is the transfer. And actually, this step majorly determines the quality of the blot that we will get. So we should always notch the top left corner of the gel to indicate the gel orientation. It's really, really important. And while transferring, the 
fractionated protein from the gel to the membrane, we should try to remove air bubbles if there are any, if there are any between the gel and the membrane. And we should also mark the membrane to indicate its orientation. Last but not least, we should not let the membrane dry at any stage during the Western blotting procedure. I hope this video was helpful. If you find it helpful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you very much.